Hello, I'm Dr. Howard Goldman. You're watching this video because you've probably made the decision you'd like cataract surgery to improve your vision. I'd like to tell you a little bit about the testing that we do prior to your cataract surgery and something called advanced cataract surgery. You see, your health insurance may only cover two of the tests that we'd like to do. One of those is a measurement of the curvature of your cornea. The other is the length of your eye. However, there are two means of measuring the length of your eye. We like to perform both. That's because one is a check on the other, and they tell us, give us rather, some different information between the two tests. The first of these, what you're looking at now, is something called an IOL master. This measures the length of your eye by optical means. All the numbers and the squiggles are helpful to me to determine just how accurate the particular test is. The second means of measuring the length of your eye is something called immersion A-scan ultrasound. This uses ultrasonic energy to measure the length of your eye. What you're looking at now is a printout of this particular test. Again, you see lots of numbers and squiggles, and again, this helps me determine just how accurate this test is, and I can check one against the other for improved accuracy on the length of your eye. There are two means of measuring the curvature of the front of your eye, as well as determining the underlying health of the cornea. One means is automatically included before cataract surgery. That's called keratometry. The other means is something called corneal topography. What you're looking at now is a printout of a corneal topography of a normal eye with a mild amount of astigmatism. The second page is something called corneal aberrometry, which shows the degree of irregularity on the surface of this person's cornea. In this case, it looks fairly normal, and we can predict a pretty good outcome. In the second case that you're looking at now, there's a serious underlying problem that would not be detected by a standard eye examination. The patient has something called keratoconus, which would cause severe distortion of vision even after cataract surgery. Without having this particular test, I might not be able to warn that patient of this problem, and that patient would probably be disappointed in the result. There's something else about the cornea that we have to check as well, something called the endothelial cell count. What you're looking at now is a photograph which magnifies the inside membrane of the cornea. The cornea, of course, is the window to the eye, that front clear membrane. The number of cells on the inside of the cornea, these are called the endothelial cells, is fixed at birth. We lose them slowly as we grow older. Some people aren't given enough to begin with. If we don't know this ahead of time, cataract surgery can lead to swelling of the cornea, which then may require something called a corneal transplant operation or a newer operation called DSEC. If we have this test and I have the opportunity to determine just how healthy the person's cornea is, I can take certain steps to improve the safety of the surgery. You see two numbers circled on this test. The first number, the larger number, is the number of cells per square millimeter, and in this case, it's a fairly good number. The second number is something called the corneal pachymetry or the thickness of the cornea. Again, in this case, it's fairly normal, but there's no way I would know that without this test. And again, unfortunately, this test is not routinely covered by your health insurance. There are many special types of lenses, intraocular lens implants, that we put inside your eye at the time of surgery. As I've described, these tests help me determine the best lens for you, as well as the power of that lens to try to achieve the refractive results you want. That is, whether you want to see better at distance or at near following cataract surgery without glasses. There are special lenses which may give you distance, near, and in-between vision. The discussion about those lenses, as well as lenses that correct astigmatism, are really individual and too complex to cover in a DVD such as this. If you have any questions about them, please do ask our surgical coordinators or me, and we'll try to answer those questions. I hope you've enjoyed this information and you understand better now why we think these tests are so very important. Thanks for listening.